Kia ora koutou and welcome to this talk on unconventional career paths into game development and the value that this brings to your team. Kia ora, I am Zoe Hobson, I'm the CEO at Runaway Play. We are a game development and publishing studio. Uh, these are my contact details if anyone would like to get in touch uh, after the talk. I'd be really happy to have a chat. So, this talk will challenge the idea that game developers are all programmers or artists. There are so many other roles and highlight the variety of career paths that can lead a person into game development. By challenging people's ideas of what a game developer's careers, career history should look like, I hope to help newcomers to the industry feel like they can have a career in games. I also hope to help existing teams to value new team members with careers outside of typical game development pathways. So throughout this talk, we will start with an introduction, then we'll just take a look at some of the roles in game development. Then the main body of the talk will focus on transferable skills from unusual places. So in this section, we'll look at some of the people from Runaway, their backgrounds and the value adds that they bring to our team. And then we'll finish up with a conclusion with some lessons and tips and inspirations that I hope that you can take away. So if you Google what qualifications do you need to be a game developer or how to become a game developer, these are some of the answers that come up. As you can see, it's pretty focused around maths and physics in a comp sci degree or around studying design but there are a lot of other pathways into game development, and these other pathways can bring a huge amount of value to your team. This talk will highlight the diversity and value that a range of backgrounds can bring to game development and why it's important to value different experiences and backgrounds when you're building that team. So, let's take a look at some of the roles involved in game development. First, I'll give some quick background on Runaway Play and what we do as context, because I'll be referencing this uh, throughout the talk. So our studio has 34 staff. We're based in Dunedin, New Zealand, though we do have some people working remotely from other places. We really value work-life balance. We have a focus on diversity and we make wholesome, positive games. These are some of our current games. We make casual free-to-play mobile games and they are available on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Stores. Our games are inspired by the natural world and most of our players are women aged 18 to 45. Our games are free to download with ads and optional purchases and we're also moving into publishing other people's games. There are a lot of different roles in game development and a lot of different pathways that can bring you into these roles. Here's some of the roles that we have and some of the people that we have at Runaway, just to paint that picture of the variety of roles that are available in game development. So we have programmers, and that is both gameplay programmers and also on the platform side. We have artists covering 3D, 2D, animators, background and concept art. We have quality assurance in-house, player support, a researcher, community managers, narrative design, game design, systems design, uh, an art manager and a tech director. We have marketing people and that covers the art, PR, organic marketing and also user acquisition. And we have management. We've got product owners, producers, leads, creative, finance and business. Transferable skills from unusual places. Through this section, I'm going to introduce you to a number of runaway staff and, with their permission, share their backgrounds and their journey that led them to game development. I hope that from this section, newcomers to the games industry can see pathways for themselves towards a career in games, and existing game teams will see value in new team members with careers outside of typical game development pathways. We're going to start with Bryce. He says, I am a father of two geeky children, 
Leia and Jacob. I met my wife while on a Lord of the Rings tour here in New Zealand and moved from LA to Dunedin. I'm also a massive Star Wars fan, and I enjoy spending my free time playing video games and building Lego. In terms of Bryce's career path, he originally studied production design for theatre and film. And then in terms of his job history, he worked as a film production designer, a set director, and an art department lead. The skills that Bryce has gained from this career are pretty varied. They include communication skills, so working within film and the art department, there's a lot of relaying important information to multiple groups of people. He's also incredibly good at following clear processes. Uh, That's really important on film sets. It's a very hierarchical environment where it's really important that you kind of do things in the right order and tell the right people the right information at the right time. He is very good at problem solving. Uh, So, I mean, film sets are very well known for having all kinds of problems crop up and working in the art department, there's a lot that can go wrong. Props go missing, props get taken home, props get stolen, props get broken. Um, And I feel like working in film and TV is kind of just a constant battle of solving problems, which is kind of one of the fun things about it. Time management is another skill that Bryce has. So again, in film, time really costs money. Um, Over time is measured by the minute and paid out to the crew. So there's a lot of time pressure um, and financial pressure around that as well. So he's like learned really good time management skills. Teamwork is another one. Uh, Again, working in LA in production design and as an art lead, he's worked with very large art teams, very large film crews and people from all kinds of different backgrounds that he's needed to work with. Uh, So he's developed really great teamwork skills. He also has great attention to detail. Uh, He is really good at using lists and having really thorough paperwork. Something that you might not realize about working in the art department on a film set is that there is a huge amount of spreadsheets and paperwork involved. Uh, You have to document every single prop and item that is named or mentioned as being used in the script, source them, make sure that they are accurate for like, it might say picks up a gun in one scene, but then four scenes later it might reference something about the gun. So you have to have a lot of that attention to detail and creating lists of all these items, making sure you know when all of them will be needed, continuity. There's a lot of organisations, so he's got fantastic skills in that area. And uh, finally, working well under pressure. Again, on film sets, it's quite a high pressure environment. There's a lot of running around. It's quite hierarchical, um, and you have to be able to cope with that and work within that environment, which Bryce was really fantastic at. Uh, Something that Bryce says, a quote from him about his skills and his background is, as a production designer on films, I often had to bridge the gap between bringing someone's creative dream into reality within the constraints of limited time and money. I also had to learn to be calm and collected when things really went wrong and had to find a practical solution to issues that arose. So with this career background and all of these fantastic skills, What kind of job would Bryce go into in game development? Now, if you were here as a live audience and I was giving this talk live, I'd probably ask for suggestions. Um, But as it is, I'll just go on to the next slide. So Bryce is the quality assurance lead at Runaway. Now, through this section, um, I'm just going to go through some of the different parts of the job down the left-hand side. And then we'll also look at the skills required to do the job down the right-hand side. So as the quality assurance lead at Runaway, Bryce is responsible for testing, finding bugs in new releases. This involves working with the development team to establish really thorough test plans. It involves undertaking thorough testing of all new releases and following really clear processes. Uh, He needs to create detailed reproduction steps for any issues he finds. So if there is a bug, being able to spell out exactly how and when it happens and report that back to the dev team. Bryce is also responsible for outsourcing management. So this involves preparing games for bulk testing offsite. 
to do this, he needs to produce really detailed test plans and instructions because, you know, he sends them away and other people need to be able to follow them. He needs to liaise with the testing team to get the most out of each testing cycle because it costs money. We're sending it away to an external company. Uh, he needs to make sure that testing is done within the time frame. It's often connected to when a build needs to ship, so that's really important. He compiles reports for the development team with highly detailed reproduction steps. And then finally, in live operations, Bryce works with the customer support team to diagnose live issues and prepare bug reports for the dev team. So this involves spotting trends and in incoming tickets, collecting detailed information on live issues, quite often under time pressure, um, and being able to document these with extreme accuracy. He also needs to be able to facilitate calm communication between players, support, and the developers, and ensure that processes are followed, even in tense situations, as I'm sure you will know if you've been exposed to anything in game dev, particularly when you have a live issue. Uh, there can be a tendency to want to rush out a fix, and Bryce is the person that makes sure we actually follow all the processes that we should. So we know that Bryce has worked as a production designer in an art league. Now, in terms of the skills that he needs to do all of these parts of the job, he's actually got all of them through his previous background. So attention to detail, a love of documentation, high value placed on following clear processes, clear communication with internal teams, that's all things that he's done as a production designer. Extremely thorough documentation and instructions, excellent communication externally, time management both of himself and of others, and excellent written communication with detailed and understandable documentation. Again, all things that he's done within production design. And for this last section to do with live operations, that attention to detail again, problem solving skills, uh, being able to handle high pressure situations and remain calm remaining methodical and following processes at all times and not being afraid to insist on, per on process, again, are all skills that he has gained from his career in production design. So from Bryce's background, he actually brings some fantastic value adds to the team. First of all, I would say is his ability to stay calm and problem solve. He was once shot at on set. He was on set um, in LA shooting, I think, a music video um, with a rapper. And somebody did a drive-by shooting and shot um, at the set. And so Bryce has experienced all kinds of crazy things like that in the film industry. And when you compare, like, being shot at on the streets of LA <laughs> when you're trying to just do your job, with um, you know having a bug come up in a game, um, they are quite a, a magnitude you know order of magnitude different in terms of the uh, sort of pressure that puts on you. And yes, we care about the bugs in our game, but I think just having some of those experiences means that he is really great at staying calm and being like, yeah, you know, we're not being shot at, so let's just take it easy here. Uh, that's a fantastic value add that he brings to our team. Uh, next up is his incredible attention to detail. Now, if you haven't worked in film, you might not realize yeah, just how much detail is involved, um, as I was mentioning before. The lists that you need to make as an art director um, and in production is uh, are just huge. They have to be so, so detailed. So he brings um, all of that background with him, which is incredibly relevant to quality assurance. He has a really good understanding of responsibility. And this is both from working in film where things are quite hierarchical, but also just from having a previous career, I think there's often just a lot of that kind of base professionalism that you gain. And so he has that really clear understanding of responsibility and professionalism. He also has a really good appreciation of a positive work environment and sitting down rather than running around on set. <laughs> and I think that just like gratitude and appreciation for your workplace and for your environment is a great positive thing to have within the team. And you know, when you compare being able to 
kind of sit at a desk and um, have a warm coffee with like running around on set, juggling 5,000 things, carrying stuff, getting a sore back, et cetera. Um, it is quite a different environment. So there's another like just cool value add that he brings is that gratitude and appreciation. Uh, another one from Bryce, uh, which just ties into his personal life, is that he plays a huge amount of mobile games. So he's one of our people on staff who plays probably the most games, even just outside of his day, of his day job. Um, and so he has great design ideas, which is a really awesome value add that we benefit from. And last but definitely not least is his love of Lego, um, which ties in with a passion for step-by-step -step instructions and process. And I think this really highlights that. So Bryce brings all kinds of fantastic skills to his role as quality assurance lead. He had never worked in games before, but he absolutely had all of the skills required to do the job and is a fantastic member of our team. Next up, we've got Courtney. So what Courtney says about herself is, I'm a 29 year old who loves technology and learning new things. I love exercising, going to the gym, playing games, learning about new technology, and also my endless struggle on how to put together hardware, and hanging with my friends. I like to do things to challenge myself, whether it be physically or mentally, and I like helping others to do the same. I also enjoy having a good laugh with my friends and love making new friends who share these traits. In terms of Courtney's career path, she studied sciences and ICT. She was very into physics and chemistry, and she actually wanted to be a physicist when she was younger. In terms of her career, she spent uh, seven years working at MITRE 10. So first of all, she worked as an office administrator. Then she worked in marketing, where she was making ads and running campaigns and events. And lastly, she worked in the Trade Hub as the Trade Hub coordinator. Uh, so in that role, she was learning a lot about the building industry and doing a lot of coordinating with a lot of different people and teams. In terms of her core skills, she really enjoys learning new things, learning about new technologies and how to apply them in everyday work. And this is something that she's done in all of her roles through MITRE 10. She's been really involved with what they're using and how they're using it um, in terms of tech and um, sort of putting processes in and making sure everything works really smoothly. She also really enjoys following direction and instructions to complete an assigned task. So working as part of a team with a really clear idea of what she's meant to be doing and being able to carry that out. Courtney has great attention to detail. Um, it's something that she's really developed through um, all of her work history She's needed to be really clear on what different people are asking for and just having that attention to detail of what was needed by different people, um, particularly working in that trade hub coordinator position. There's a lot of, you know, needing to sort of see lists come in and go out and making sure that everything lined up. Problem solving is another big skill for Courtney. It's something that she's really built through her time at MITRE 10. So a lot of her role at MITRE 10 involved uh, problems cropping up and then needing to solve them and figure out the best path forward. So that's something she's had a lot of practice with. Teamwork and collaborating with other team members to achieve a goal is another skill of Courtney's. So again, she just really enjoys that, like working together with people and being able to complete those tasks or reach those goals. And last, but definitely not least, is effective communication. Uh, in her role at MITRE 10, she was needing to liaise with a lot of different people, different groups, people from quite different backgrounds. Um, and so she had to develop really clear and effective communication strategies. So with this career background and with all of these fantastic skills, let's take a look at what role Courtney has at Runaway. So Courtney is a programmer. Now to go through some of what Courtney does, she's involved with building new games. So she works with the design and the art teams to develop ideas for new mechanics and new games. She is also involved with prototyping, so building quick working demos of features and then integrating feedback into the next revisions. She has to be able to work on production code, so building new features and production quality code 
and ensuring that code works within the biggest scope of the project. And she needs to play test new features and be able to give feedback. Our programmers also need to be able to do live games programming. So that involves working alongside other programmers to maintain our current live games. It involves bug fixing and revisions. A lot of bug fixing when things go wrong. <laughs> Hopefully not too often. Uh, updating, uh, doing updates that are focused on player feedback. So we're really big on making sure we're constantly talking to our community and hearing what people care about and then being able to put updates out that address those things when we can. And new features to improve game experience or to add content. So we know that Courtney has worked at MITRE 10 with that great career history. Now, in terms of some of the skills she needs to do this job, she's learned a lot of that through her work at MITRE 10. So communication skills and ability to work well within a team. Problem solving, that was a big one that we um, were talking about with MITRE 10. Working with others and following instructions and guidelines. Attention to detail and focus on user experience and ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes. That's something that particularly from the marketing work at MITRE 10, she's really gained. In terms of her communication skills and teamwork, she's built that. Problem solving and sometimes under pressure, um, working in that trade hub coordinator position. Attention to detail and careful methodical work is something that Courtney's definitely built. And understanding other people's perspectives and user experience is something that she's learned both from working with a lot of different people and needing to kind of solve problems with them, but also from that marketing role. And then we know that she also has done her ICT study. And so from that, she's gained that knowledge of relevant programming languages and also those programming skills. So in terms of value adds, there's a whole load of great things that Courtney brings to our team from her unique background and from her uh, work experience. So first of all, that communicating effectively, dealing with a lot of different personalities every day, um, working at MITRE 10 means that she has built really, really strong communication skills. Now that kind of ties into the next point, which is Courtney's ability to contribute opinions to, uh, to the wider team confidently. I think partly because of that experience at MITRE 10, Courtney's particularly big, uh, particularly good at being able to contribute ideas uh, to the wider team with, with confidence. So even though she's only recently joined Runaway, she's someone I've really noticed has been able to contribute ideas, join discussions and chime in on things, which is really great. Courtney also has this base um, like responsibility and professionalism. Uh, time management skills and initiative. And I really think that that's gained from that seven years of a previous career. Uh, so those skills are super valuable and super important and something that we really appreciate um, at Runaway. Courtney also has really good awareness of user experience. And I think that comes from that, you know, previous marketing roles, being able to think about um, putting herself in someone else's shoes and looking at how things will be interpreted. That's a really great skill and it's great to have some like base understanding of that coming into a programming role. And she also has the clear understanding that errors cost money. You know, working in the trade department, when something goes wrong, when the wrong thing's ordered, it's going to cost somebody money. Um, and that's a really valuable thing for a programmer to also know and understand and have experience with. So a quote from Courtney that I think is uh, really relevant is, my biggest struggle coming out of university was I thought I couldn't work in programming because I really struggled with problem solving. My last job at MITRE 10 meant I basically solved problems all day to make sure things worked and we could operate effectively. It helped me to look at problems in different ways and uh, sorry, it helped me to look at problems in different ways and how to approach them. I don't find myself getting stuck anymore on where to start a programming task as I know how to look at it from different perspectives. So Courtney brings a whole load of different skills and uh, value adds to our business from the fact that she's worked at MITRE 10. 
so I hope that that helps you to see um, the amount of value that we can place on those sort of non-traditional pathways into game development. Next up, we've got Jess. So if you ask Jess to tell you about herself, she says, I am a joker and I tend to talk too much. I like to spend quite a bit of time alone and am surprisingly introverted considering how outgoing I can be. I'm quirky, read weird, and have a husband and a nine-year-old stepdaughter as well as two furry children, a cat and a small fluffy dog. My hobbies include reading, all sorts of crafts, artistic roller skating, eating delicious foods, mostly sweet treats, being outside in nature, going for walks or sitting in the backyard and watching the birds. In terms of Jess's career path, she studied English, drama and psychology. And then she's worked as a support worker in assisted living for people with traumatic brain injuries and mental health issues. And she's also worked as a receptionist for a charity that involved dealing with food bank and other social service clients, as well as residential addictions program and uh, related services. So some of the core skills that Jess has is that first of all, she genuinely enjoys helping people. If you look at the work that she's done, that's pretty evident. Next, Jess really enjoys writing and word processing and has really strong uh, communication skills. She was always the friend volunteering to help others with their CVs because she just really likes doing it. Uh, she's really good at communicating things in a tactful and polite way. And when communicating in written format, she finds it easier to stay neutral and calm when things are high pressure. So that's something she really likes doing and she's really good at it. Jess also really likes structure and rules. For example, in her receptionist work, where she was in charge of organizing a large number of systems. Jess was also the health and safety manager for a workplace of 50 staff. So that involved a lot of checklists and reporting and she really sort of enjoys that structure. Jess is also great at prioritization, organization and time management. And she has strong empathy and understanding of people and others' viewpoints. So with all of these wonderful skills, let's look at what role Jess has at Runaway. So Jess is one of our player support staff. So to look at what that involves, first of all, she's frontline player support, managing and replying to player help tickets via an email based support system. So she responds to player support requests, delivering service and support by swiftly addressing account issues, technical faults, that kind of thing. She's also involved with interacting with players to provide general education information in response to their inquiries or their concerns or their requests. Next up, she works across the live games in terms of communication with players around any bugs that get detected. So that involves evaluating and analyzing potential issues. Identifying and escalating priority or trending issues to quality assurance, so she works very closely with Bryce. Gathering relevant player information following a set process. Communication uh, between quality assurance developers and players. And finally, she's also involved with online community interaction. So she works with the community manager to respond through social channels like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram as required. She also works with the community manager and the quality assurance lead to track and report on common issues or suggestions from players. The aim with that for us is to improve the gameplay experience based on what players most frequently encounter problems with or most frequently request. So that's a really important channel as well. So if we look at the skills required to do that, we know that Jess has studied English and psychology. She has very strong written communication skills with a professional and friendly tone. She also has great teamwork, uh, an excellent use of tone that suits the communication platform, the ability to see things from other people's perspectives and think and care about player experience, and a lot of empathy for players. And this also connects into the psychology background. We also know that Jess has worked as a support worker. So through this work, she's really good at listening and valuing other people's opinions. And we also know that she has a really strong desire to help people. 
we also know that she's done this reception work. And through that, she's gained attention to detail, ability to prioritize critical issues. We know that she's really well organized and able to manage time. She's great at processes, great with documentation skills, and also calm communication to multiple groups. So let's have a little look at the value adds that Jess brings to our team. So first of all, is her genuine desire to help people. When you look at her job history, this is very evident. And I think that in her role, this is something that's really, really important and it really shines through. Secondly, her empathy for players, while also being able to value and follow processes internally. And that's a really hard balance to get right, to really care about the players and what they're saying, but also to understand the development team's perspective and be able to kind of see both sides of the coin. Um, and that's a fantastic value add that Jess brings. She also has her exceptional written communication skills with a genuine voice that has professional language but isn't overly formal. And that really just comes from, you know, everything she's done in her background has grown those skills. Also, her ability to connect with people in a personal but still professional way. People feel heard and valued, and that's really, really important for us as a brand. Um, having players write in and write reviews that say things like, I love Jessica, she's always so kind. Having Jess, you know, be the wonderful person that she is reflects on who Runaway is because she, in a lot of cases, is, you know, the sort of frontline interaction with our players, um, along with our other support people and also our community managers. And so those people are really representing our brand. And uh, finally, the other value add that I'd mention is enjoying the core work of writing, which is really important. So we, Jess and I were trying to work this out. We, we think she's probably answered over 60,000 tickets over her six years at Runaway. Um, so, you know, when you're working with that kind of volume of work, it's pretty important that you actually just enjoy the core thing you are doing, which is helping people and writing to them. So, um, I mean, Jess just has a fantastic background that has brought so much to our team and I'm so grateful for. And now the last person that we're going to cover is Jonas. So what Jonas says about himself is, I'm a nature enthusiast and science communicator. I have a deep empathy for wildlife and a desire to use technology to make nature more accessible in people's everyday life. I use my voice to help protect wild creatures and spaces, as well as to help people find meaningful connections with the natural world. In my spare time, I love tramping, diving, wildlife photography, meditating, drawing, science fiction, and gaming. So if we look at Jonas's career path, he studied science, literature, and outdoor education. Uh, those were his favorite subjects at school. Then at Eastern Oregon University, he had a focus on computer science, art, and biology. He then did a Master's of Science Communication at the University of Otago. In Jonas's career, he worked for six years as an informal educator at a science museum, the Pacific Science Center in Seattle. And he also spent five years as a resident assistant at university. So looking at the skills that Jonas has, first of all, he has a keen desire to use technology to help people find meaningful connections in nature. So in undergrad, this took the shape of making videos and uh, nature games. At the Science Museum, this involved a lot of personal interactions, hands-on learning and planetarium technology. And then he also did his masters where he had a focus on how play is involved in learning. So that like desire to use technology to help people connect with nature is something that he's done throughout his career and is a really strong um, and fantastic skill. Next up is his knowledge and love of nature. So this is a key personal interest and time investment. Um, you know, Jonas spends a lot of his personal time out in nature 
doing nature sits, tramping, diving, photography, wildlife observation. Um, you know, most weekends I feel like Jonas is posting some kind of photo or video of some, you know, some kind of interaction that he's having with nature, uh, which is really really cool and really inspirational and I don't know I I, I love that um, and it's really nice to see someone who is so invested. Next is communication skills. So storytelling, informal education, written communication, both formal and informal, engagement strategies for reaching people. That's something that Jonas is uh, really strong at and that he's developed throughout his career history. Also connecting with and supporting different people. So as a resident assistant, Jonas felt how deeply meaningful it could be to connect with and support different people on their journey. And that ties into his communication skills. And uh, finally, research and documentation skills. That's been something that has been evident in Jonas um, in Jonas's both career path, but also in his personal life with those nature sits, with the way that he writes in his journal when he's sitting in nature, he documents the creatures that he finds. It's there in his personal life and it's there through his master's work. So uh, there's also a quote here from Jonas, which is, I've always felt most at home in the outdoors, which also comes with a strong sense of curiosity and a desire to protect nature. From a young age, I've known that I liked working with people, technology, storytelling, and sharing my own enthusiasm for wildlife and conservation. So with that incredible skill set, let's look at the role that Jonas has at Runaway. So Jonas is our nature researcher. So what that involves for us is, first of all, research. Jonas does research um, and then pitches new natural history inspired sets of creatures to go into runaway games. He also provides feedback to artists on how their designs reflect the real creatures. And he produces research documents full of useful factual content, which is then used to go into our games. He's also involved with factual content creation, so writing facts for natural history inspired games. He writes creature dialogues and narratives. He prepares and writes social posts as needed for use on social media. And he defines and creates game species illustration content. Another part of his role is educational marketing and engagement. So within this part, he's coordinating educational and outreach content with external organizations, evaluating factual content and pitching improvements for feedback, and contributing to marketing by creating and communicating natural history content via social media, including live streams. So when we look at the skills involved to do this job, we know that Jonas has his master's in science communication. Now this obviously ties into exceptional research skills um, and an ability to determine content relevant and inspiring for a nature oriented casual gaming audience. It also involves strong written communication skills factual com um, of factual content, strong narrative skills with fictional dialogue, and strong communication skills. All of, that, uh, all of that is skills that Jonas has developed and used within his Masters of Science Communication. Now we also know that Jonas has got um, a comp sci and biology background. So this connects into having a passion for games as a way of educating. And then we know he also has this whole personal life and passion with connecting with nature. This ties into needing a high level of knowledge about the natural world. Also being really knowledgeable about creatures and species. And then we also know that he was an educator at the Science Museum. And so the skills he gained from that were exactly what he needs here, which is experience communicating between a number of groups, including casual game players, scientists, educators, game developers, and artists. So he really gained a lot of those communication skills um, at the Science Museum. And also really gained the ability to connect with people and share and communicate a love of nature 
um, in this case through our games and through social media. Now Jonas also worked as a resident assistant and through that role he also developed that ability to communicate with lots of different people. So Jonas has got a really fantastic set of skills uh, through his background which he brings to this role as nature researcher. Now in terms of the value adds, let's talk through some of these. So first of all I would say education, um, entertainment and education. Jonas has uh, an in-depth knowledge and skill set on how play is involved in learning and that's come from you know a lot of his background you know right back to undergrad where he was really interested in this topic and was you know really involved with videos and nature games through to then doing his master's um, in science communication that um, that knowledge and skill set about play and learning is really key and brings a huge amount to us as a business making games inspired by the natural world with some educational content that's within the games. Next up is empathy, active listening and questioning strategies. Uh, so these are skills that he's developed as uh, both a resident assistant and also as an informal educator. These skills are really useful in terms of um, communicating with both co-workers and players. And these skills also tie into Jonas's approach to design, where game elements are like a series of questions to ask the player to notice and explore as they play. So that empathy, that active listening, that questioning comes into the way that Jonas, for example, writes narrative um, that goes into our games that connects in with the nature elements. Next up is making complicated concepts more accessible. Now this is really useful when communicating with artists or programmers and when communicating nature facts in the casual context of a game. He's developed this sort of ability to make complicated concepts accessible through working in the science museum and talking with a lot of different people with a lot of different levels of understanding about various things. And so that's a really fantastic value add that he brings to how he does his role at Runaway. And the other thing that I really want to highlight is his genuine passion for and connection to nature. As a personal value, this shines out through absolutely everything that Jonas does. And I feel like Jonas genuinely, you know, I think makes all of us who know him connect more deeply with nature um, through being inspired by him. Um, and that is an incredible value add, I think, just as humans around him, but particularly as people working in a game company where our games are inspired by the natural world. He also brings experience, uh, personal experience and understanding. So his experience uh, at a butterfly house, volunteering for an aquarium, that personal experience of being around these creatures, which then we make games about, is really, really valuable. For example, the mechanics in Flutter, one of our games, are as much about the excitement of discovery and curiosity as the game is about beauty and butterflies. So having worked in some of those environments, having spent time in those environments, Jonas really notices both what he like what he cares about, but also what other people seem to connect with. And he brings that knowledge to our team. So he brings an incredible amount of value from his background um, and we are very grateful to have him at Runaway. So to sum all of that up, uh, we'll just look at some lessons and takeaways that I hope that you have gained from this talk. So for those of you who are currently outside of the games industry, I really hope that you've seen that you can get into game development from any background. I hope that going through this talk and looking at the different people at Runaway and, and their skills has helped to show you how you can value your own skills and how to portray them to a games company to help yourself get hired. And in terms of inspiration, I just really hope that this has inspired you to value your skills, whatever they may be, and to be able to create your own path into game development. For those who are currently in the game industry, 
Um, I hope that this talk has helped you to see value in non-traditional backgrounds and see how those can be great skill sets uh, to add to your team. Hopefully going through some of these like sort of job descriptions and then the skills and looking at how that ties into backgrounds has also helped you to see how you could determine if a job candidate could be a good fit, um, even if their background is from outside of games. And I really hope that this talk has inspired you to build diverse teams where you really value different backgrounds and different perspectives. Uh, so that's everything from me today. I believe we may have a Q&A at the end. Uh, but also, if anyone would like to contact me, uh, ask questions, or just connect, my details are here. Uh, thank you all very much. Ngā mihi nui, kia koutou. Uh, kia pai tōra. <laughs>